It recently surpassed Brazil to become the world's sixth most populous country, it has one of the largest film industries in the world, and around 450 languages are spoken there. These are just three of the interesting facts that you're going to learn about Nigeria. Today we're going to focus on Nigeria, the most populous country in Africa, and one known for its incredible cultural diversity. If you're one of those people who thinks that Africa is all the same, think again. It's located in West Africa, and it shares land borders with Benin, Niger, Chad, and Cameroon. It also shares maritime borders with Equatorial Guinea and Sao Tome and Principe. Nigeria has an area of 923,769 square kilometers. That makes it the 32nd largest country in the world by land area, and is very similar in size to another African country, Tanzania, as well as Pakistan and Venezuela. Alright, get this. Because Nigeria is located near the equator, and because most maps use Mercator projection in which dimensions appear larger as you move away from the equator, Nigeria often looks a lot smaller on maps than it actually is. It's actually over twice the size of Sweden and almost twice the size of Spain. <sighs> Nigeria has a long coastline along the Gulf of Guinea, part of the Atlantic Ocean. This coastal region is densely forested. The country then extends north, with much of the land covered by savanna, grassy plains with few trees, and there are also large river valleys formed by the Niger River and its major tributaries. Then there are the central and eastern highlands. The highlands become particularly prominent in the east, near the border with Cameroon. Here you'll find Nigeria's highest point, Chapawadi, which is 2,419 meters above sea level. In the far north of the country, the Sahel region is the transition zone from savanna to the Sahara Desert, and as a result, the landscape here changes, becoming much flatter and more arid. The few rivers here flow into Lake Chad, which forms an endorheic basin, meaning that rivers flow into the lake instead of away from it and towards the oceans. While much of Lake Chad lies within neighboring countries, the rivers flowing into it are a vital source of water in the arid northern part of Nigeria. The climate of Nigeria also follows a south-to-north pattern. The southern areas have a tropical monsoon climate, so they receive abundant rainfall during the rainy season from November to March, and the temperature changes little year-round. The central part of the country has a tropical savanna climate, and it doesn't get nearly as much rain as the tropical monsoon areas. Most rain falls during the wet season between May and October, and there's a distinct dry season lasting several months. The capital Abuja experiences this type of climate, as well as Lagos. Lagos is a lot wetter than Abuja, but not wet enough for its climate to be considered tropical monsoon. The far north of Nigeria is classified as arid or semi-arid. There's a rainy season from May to September, but there's almost no rain in the other months, and temperatures are more extreme here. Sokoto, one of the main cities of northern Nigeria, is a good example of this, where high temperatures in the hottest season regularly reach 45 degrees, and lows can be as cold as 12 to 15 degrees. 12 to 15 degrees. Where I'm from in Canada, that's a nice spring day. But in Nigeria, that's cold. Nigeria contains some biodiversity hotspots, such as the Cross Sanaga Bioko coastal forests, which straddle the border with Cameroon. This forest region is home to the endangered drill monkey, the critically endangered cross river gorilla, as well as chimpanzees. One of the most important geographical features, not just in Nigeria, but in the whole of the West African region, is the Niger River. The third longest river in Africa, the Niger River gave its name not only to Nigeria, but also to the neighboring country of Niger. The course of the Niger River baffled European geographers for centuries, as its source is located in the highlands of Guinea, just 150 kilometers east of the Atlantic Ocean. But then it flows northeastward through Mali, then it flows southeast through Niger and along the border with Benin, and then through Nigeria, where it forms a large delta and drains into the Gulf of Guinea. Nigeria is a federation with 36 states plus a capital region. Two important ones to know about are the Federal Capital Territory and Lagos. The focal point of the Federal Capital Territory is the capital city Abuja. It's a planned city, which did not exist until the 1980s. Until then, the capital was Lagos. But Lagos had been the British colonial capital until 1960, and the Nigerian government wanted to create a new capital with no connection to the British. They also wanted a capital city closer to the center of the country, so the city of Abuja was built during the 1980s and became the capital of Nigeria in 1991. 
Since then, the metro area has grown rapidly to over 2 million people. The federal capital territory was created to govern Abuja and the outlying areas. Abuja contains several important symbols of Nigeria, like Zuma Rock and the Abuja National Mosque. Despite its rapid growth, Abuja is still outshined by Lagos, the largest city in Nigeria and one of the largest on the African continent. Today, Lagos proper has a population of around 8 million, while the metro area has up to 23 million people. It's the commercial center of West Africa and it has one of the continent's busiest ports. Lagos is also home to Nigeria's film industry, which is the third largest in the world by value and the second largest by total output. The industry is often referred to as Nollywood, though not everyone likes this term because Nigerians didn't create it. It first appeared in a New York Times article. And it also just sounds kind of stupid. I mean, we have Hollywood, Bollywood, we don't need another one. Fortunately, Nigeria does not have to deal with many natural disasters, but there are environmental issues such as devastating pollution in the Niger Delta area due to oil extraction. Desertification in the Northern Sahel region is another concern. There's an international effort to fight desertification called the Great Green Wall Project, with the intention of planting an 8,000 kilometer wall of trees across the African continent. But the project seems to be failing, because without sufficient water, the planted trees don't survive. Nigeria has been home to many advanced civilizations, such as the Nok civilization, the Kingdom of Enri, the Kingdoms of Ife and Oyo, the Kanemborno Empire, and the Sokoto Caliphate. The first time that a state corresponding with the current borders appeared was in 1914, when the British colonial administrators merged the southern and northern Nigerian protectorates to form Nigeria. Nigeria became independent in 1960, and for most of its history until 1999, it was ruled by a series of military juntas. This began in 1966, the year before the tragic Biafra War, in which the majority of Igbo areas in the southeast of the country attempted to separate from Nigeria. There was a transition to democratic government in 1999, which was not exactly a smooth transition, with corruption and questionable elections. But this has improved, and more recent elections have been widely considered more legitimate. In the past decade, Nigeria has struggled with the Boko Haram insurgency, which gained control over large portions of the north in 2014. A multi-country group of West and North African countries called the Multinational Joint Task Force has been fighting Boko Haram since then, and today they no longer control large areas of the north. However, they and other armed groups remain active, and the security situation in the north remains a challenge. Nigeria is an incredibly diverse country, both ethnically and linguistically, with over 250 ethnic groups and around 450 distinct languages. The three largest linguistic groups are Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. These three languages are recognized as national languages. However, English is the official language of the country because picking either Hausa, Igbo, or Yoruba would seem like showing favoritism towards one linguistic community. National languages are more symbolic of a country, while official languages are used in administration and education and so on. Hausa is the most widely spoken language in Nigeria, with 63 million speakers, followed by Yoruba, with around 42 million, and Igbo, with 40 million. Hausa is a member of the larger Afroasiatic language family, meaning that it's distantly related to Arabic, Amharic, and Ancient Egyptian. Yoruba and Igbo are both members of the Niger-Congo language family, and so they're distantly related to languages like Wolof and Swahili. But to be honest, these languages barely scratch the surface of the incredible linguistic diversity in Nigeria. Another important division in Nigeria is religion, with the north being majority Muslim and the south being majority Christian. Most Muslims in Nigeria follow the Sunni branch of Islam, and most Christians belong to different Protestant denominations, although around a quarter of them are Catholic. Nigeria has a high birth rate and a rapidly growing population. In 1990, Nigeria had a population of 95 million, and it entered the top 10 most populous countries. According to recent estimates, Nigeria has overtaken Brazil to become the sixth most populous country in the world, with 219 million people. That's 2.3 times as many people as there were around 30 years ago. This population growth can lead to serious problems. For example, in the rural north, it's put great strain on the land, aggravating issues like desertification, as well as worsening the security challenges there. 
Oil extraction dominates the economy of Nigeria, accounting for around 40% of GDP and 80% of government revenue. The oil deposits are located around the Niger River Delta. Before oil extraction began, this area contained bio-rich mangrove forests, but the rapid growth of the oil industry has caused severe damage to these forests. The country has also faced challenges in ensuring that its citizens receive the benefits of that oil extraction. And as you can guess, most of them don't. Dependence on oil revenue has made the country vulnerable to fluctuations in oil prices, especially when prices have dropped rapidly, such as during the 1980s and the mid-2010s. Other important parts of the economy are financial services, tourism associated with large cultural events, agriculture, which employs over half of the population, and extraction of other natural resources like coal and tin. The natural resources of Nigeria are represented in its flag. The two green bands represent the country's natural riches, and the white symbolizes peace and harmony between its peoples. As you can see, Nigeria is a fascinating country. It lies on some of Africa's major transition zones, both ecologically and demographically. It also contains one of the continent's most important rivers, the Niger River. Nigeria's peoples are very diverse and all have rich histories, languages, and traditions. The country currently faces many difficulties, but Nigeria is full of potential, resources, and a youthful population ready to find solutions to those challenges. Now, over to you. What did you know about Nigeria before this video? What's something new that you learned? And if you're from Nigeria, what's something you would like people to know about your country? Do you want to see GeoFocus videos before anyone else? Become a member of this channel and you'll see videos one week early, along with other benefits. For more information, click the Join button, which is right next to the Subscribe button. If you liked this video, then please press the Like button and have a nice day.